Welcome back to part two and the second video on Bitcoin spot ETFs. And if you haven't watched part one yet, then I've included a link above here and in the description below for you to check out. Because in part one, we looked at what an ETF is, what a Bitcoin spot ETF is, what a Bitcoin futures ETF is, and what the main advantages and disadvantages of Bitcoin spot ETFs are. And in this video, we're gonna look at which companies offer a Bitcoin spot ETF, how you can buy Bitcoin spot ETFs, can you invest in a Bitcoin spot ETF outside of the United States, in other countries such as the UK, Canada, Australia, or in the EU? Do Bitcoin spot ETFs actually already exist in other countries? And finally, how successful have they been so far and will they be in future? So please do like this video and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to offer more content for you in future. And let's jump straight in and take a further look at Bitcoin spot ETFs. Which companies offer a Bitcoin spot ETF? Well, all 11 approved Bitcoin spot ETFs began trading on the 11th of January, 2024. And those 11 are Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which trades on the New York Stock Exchange, BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust ETF, which trades on the NASDAQ, the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF, Fidelity's Wise Origin Trust BTF, which trades on the Chicago Board Options Exchange, ARK21 Shares Bitcoin ETF, Invesco Galaxy Bitcoin ETF, Vanex Bitcoin Trust, Franklin Templeton's Franklin Bitcoin ETF, the Wisdom Tree Bitcoin Fund, Hashdex Bitcoin ETF, and the Valkyrie Bitcoin Fund. As mentioned previously, eight of the 11 ETFs use Coinbase as their Bitcoin custodian, with Fidelity using its own service, Vanek using Gemini, and Hashdex using BitGo Trust. And how can you invest in Bitcoin spot ETFs? Well, investors can buy and sell ETF shares through brokers, just like with stocks, with online brokers such as Robinhood, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, and interactive brokers, to name just a few. Or you can go to the ETF issuer directly with you maybe having to set up an account with one of their brokers for some issuers, with many of them actually lowering their fees recently to remain competitive with others. And even crypto exchanges are expected to offer these in 2024 also, such as Kraken and Coinbase. But essentially, you'd need to research the available Bitcoin spot ETFs, open an account with a broker, add funds to the account, order your Bitcoin spot ETF, and then monitor its performance moving forward. And can you invest in a Bitcoin spot ETF outside of the United States, in other countries such as the UK, Canada, Australia, or in the EU, for example? Well, the US was actually the ninth country to introduce spot Bitcoin ETFs, with Canada, which was number one on the list and actually approved its spot Bitcoin ETFs back in 2021, followed by Germany, Jersey, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Brazil, Guernsey, and Australia being the other eight. And before the US got involved, there were already a total of 22 active Bitcoin spot ETFs with just over $6 billion in total assets combined. And you can see those with the most assets here, with the top three being from Canada, Germany, and Jersey, which is the largest of the Channel Islands, located between England and France, but closest to the northwest of France. One of Canada's Bitcoin ETFs called 3IQ, which you can see on this list, and it's the eighth one down, also started trading on NASDAQ Dubai in 2021, meaning Middle East investors can access it. It's because of the size of the United States economy and companies we saw previously that hold so many assets under management as to why it was such big news. But a question I've been asked quite a lot recently is if people from outside of the US, and particularly a lot of people who are based in the UK, can they invest in these US Bitcoin spot ETFs? And the short answer is no, unfortunately. If you're in the UK, because an ETF would need to issue a key investor document or launch its funds for the UK market specifically. The UK doesn't have a Bitcoin spot ETF and I don't know of any plans to have one either. And with the UK having strong links with Jersey and Guernsey, most of their Bitcoin spot ETFs 
are actually placed on European exchanges, meaning that you're likely to be able to access one if you're based in the EU, for example, in France and the Netherlands, but not in the UK, with the first European Bitcoin spot ETF actually being listed in Amsterdam. So let's now take a look at the United States Bitcoin spot ETFs and how successful they've been so far, because the hype surrounding these before they got approved was that they might lead to the, a huge increase in the price of Bitcoin. And that hasn't happened, as you can see here, leading it to be called a sell the news event, with the fear and greed index actually falling to neutral for the first time in months, as you can see here. But there are still some positives coming from the Bitcoin spot ETFs in the short term that they've been approved. For example, as you can see here, the Bitcoin spot ETFs held 95,000 Bitcoin after only six full days of trading with assets under management or AUM nearing $4 billion. Fidelity's and BlackRock's iShares ETFs both had over $1.2 billion in inflows in the first six days of trading with Eric Balkunas, who's a senior ETF analyst at Bloomberg, stating in a post that you can see here that the amount of capital coming into the ETFs has actually surpassed the outflows from the Grayscale ETF, which decreased by a huge $2.8 billion in the first six days of trading, which was obviously reported in the news too, and is perhaps explained by investors selling and switching ETF products or provider due to its high fees when compared to the other ETFs. On the fourth day of trading though, spot Bitcoin ETFs generated more than three times the amount of trading volume than all 500 ETFs that were launched in 2023 combined. And in the first five days of trading, the Bitcoin spot ETFs reached a record high of $14 billion in volume, which hadn't ever been matched before by commodity ETFs, with only those tracking the S&P 500 or NASDAQ 100 indexes having more volume. And just to compare the two slightly, the US stock market cap is about $52 trillion, compared with Bitcoin's $810 billion at the time of collecting the data, which is about 60 times less. Also, Bitcoin has become the second largest ETF commodity in terms of assets under management in the US, surpassing silver, which is now third, crude oil and natural gas, with only gold being ahead of it. So there is some positive news with these Bitcoin spot ETFs. And although it's not having any effect on Bitcoin's price at the moment, which we need to separate at such an early stage, I believe, but if this continues, then it can only be positive for the price, as we need to remember that Bitcoin is a scarce asset with only 21 million BTC and the halving taking place in 2024 also. So I believe that the long-term picture is still very bright and bullish. In my opinion, the approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs is promising for the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency industry and represents an acceptance from those who've attacked the space for so many years that it's not going away and should actually be seen as a valid investment opportunity. So that ends these two videos on Bitcoin spot ETFs. But as always, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. Are you for them or against them? And what do you see the future holding for Bitcoin spot ETFs. And if you're interested in more of a tailored approach to your general crypto education, and you think you'd benefit from having someone look over your shoulder and guide you on your journey, I do offer one-to-one -one coaching to those who have the desire and the means to educate themselves further. And there are links in the description below where you can message me and book in a free video call to see if we'd be a good fit. And if you found this content interesting, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really does help and have a great day.